I am. So this is uh, Sebastian Labe with his Quantumino solver. Right. Game with 16 pe 17 pieces. If you set one aside, any one aside, the remaining 16 will fit in the box. Yeah. How many ways? You can flip them over so there's at least two ways. It's a colleague in the yeah. board department who was given uh, this as a Christmas gift in December and he left it in the department uh, room for a while and uh, I was uh, trying to solve it since January and never was able to have the, the passions to, uh, to do it. <laughs> And in fact, I, I didn't know about dancing blinks at that time. Like if I heard it, I didn't know it, it was able to, uh, to solve this kind of problem. So in May, somebody told, uh, told that and I started to, uh, to code it. But in Sage, there's uh, dancing links already used to solve uh, Sudoku problems. Mm -hmm. So it was really easy to, uh, to solve it. Like in two hours, I was able to code it. And, but now I've been uh, improving the code a lot, so I've been spending uh, too much time on this <laughs> before coming here and a little bit this week as well. Um, okay, so now I'm, I just opened the documentation from the notebook, so that, that will be how I will show it. So I just go in the, there's a game section, so there was already the Sudoku puzzle, so I added this module, Family Games America's <laughs> Can Terminal Solver. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's not all three or four of them. Yeah. That's a job for you. So I, <laughs> I put, there's a video on YouTube, so you can find it, and this is the link for the, the company. So let's go in the cells right away. So this is uh, just a function that helps us to uh, see the the problems if we don't have this uh, at home. Here, this will show in Gmod all the pieces with the, <laughs> the proper color. <laughs> okay, so they are enumerated from 0 to uh, 17. So the goal is, as I recall, is to put the, one of them aside and tile this uh, 2 by 5 by 8 box with them. So, which one do you want to solve? <laughs> Give me a... How about take out this one. Because that one's literally out. Yeah, this one? Yeah. Yeah, there. So it's number one, right? You got your colors wrong. Uh, yeah, they are. This is the pink one, the dark, the red oh, one. Okay, okay. They're actually the pink. So this is pink. So without the number one, so I'm just going to change the example here. Gary, uh, remove those comments. Are you less? Okay. So I just import the, the class which solves the problem. And here I uh, so because it makes it pure and partial. Yeah, I just made some modification. We'll expand the air. Let's yeah, see. let's see if I can make it work. <laughs> so uh Quentin Yeah, I should have. Should have. I hope I will be able to make it work. Let's see. Into a partial form. So, what was the one? Unexpected keyword argument, so that means. Mm, Uh, 
was just thinking. Sorry, I gotta look at it a little bit more. Um, I get it. I can show something else uh, <laughs> because I I've been working on something else and this was working, but I didn't come back on this. So I there's two things I implemented in fact. So um, <laughs> if I go back in the is there an old version of some server? Sorry? Is there an old version on some server? No. <laughs> no, I will fix it in five minutes, but without your attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in the, in the combinatorics uh, part, I added a dialing solver, which solves this problem but in the more general way. So it can be... Uh, you. You still have an, a certain number of uh, pieces called polyuminoes and you want to tie a box. And I made it general enough so that it can be in any uh, dimension. Okay? And uh, for this particular problem, each piece must be used once. And uh, rotation and reflection, uh, rotation are allowed, not reflection. Okay? So this is the three arguments that I allow in for the tiling solver. So let's do uh, this, this is not a good one. Yeah, this one. So this is a problem. This is another puzzle from Florent Ivar. And uh, you will understand. So here I didn't allow the, the reflection, so there are no uh, solution. But if I allow the the reflection, then I get hope will now work. Yeah, now works. So this is into this. So this is the the solution. Th these were the pieces of this puzzle. And uh, in the if you read the Knut paper, there are the if you open the, the you have a. I could open it. I won't. There is an example. Sorry, I should have. In the Knut paper on dancing, there's an example <coughs> where you uh, you must tile a certain uh, rectangle with a pentomino where are the the, the y pentomino. And you can uh, reuse it. It's only with Y pentomino. Mm -hmm. So here I'm. I did an animation that illustrate the dancing links, the thing that the, the backtracking algorithm. So this is the thing I just fixed. And it's working, but but I changed one argument. I should not. <laughs> Has an impact on the other thing. It will take some seconds. It's already generated the animation, or it's only yeah. While it's now? loading, I can open the the note paper, so you will see an image. Like it's rendering the animation. Yeah. So it's to draw like fifty PNG images. Forty. Forty. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, so yeah, this is a problem I'm actually solving. So the the. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. No, so it's it's an area of six, so you can reuse it. Uh, always the same piece. So I may I'm I'm making an animation of the, of the dancing link solver. So what it does, it it removes some of them and then puts it back and then remove and puts it back. So maybe the animation is ready now. Let's see. Close you. 
Where is the thing set? It does not appear. So I don't know. That's it. Maybe eleven. No. no, that's not it. That's some track ticket. Oh. Ah, yes. No. Yes. Okay. Great. So I did this animation was because I this this the, the visualizing the solution of this is broken. So I'm sorry for that. But now what I would like, so you see maybe you imagine a solution of this here <coughs> shown in Gmod. I can turn it around. So what I would like is to get an animation of those in 3D, but mm -hmm. the same way as this. Yeah. I was like, curious to see it. I'm, this is the first time I see it today. This Seems like it's going around. backwards so much. Sorry? Is it going back backwards? Or yeah, yeah it's it, it, uh, it going. It's go. It goes backward. Remove one pieces at, at the time and then re and put them back ah, okay, so to the next solution. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's backtracking and then the next solution. But back you don't track. see the, the initial film. Okay. Yeah, because it's too fast. Like it. Ah, uh, initial. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And there's something more I want to show. So this is my main project of the week. I hope it will work well. Okay, so I recall my goal is to uh, transform a REST file into notebook. Okay. So this is an example I made. Uh, this is an HTML which is rendered by the Docutil tool. So the, the source, if I click here, view document source, this is the source. So this is a REST uh, syntax, mm -hmm. like that, with the section, with, with the double column like that, with the sage stuff here. So this is a REST file. So yesterday I managed to use the MatJax uh, to render those, uh, those mat stuff, like that. OK, so now you. Nice. We want to transform this into a notebook. So I just copy the link here, the RST link, and then I go into the notebook and click upload. So I added some more uh, documentation here on the nice. kind of format we can use because it's not any HTML that works, it's not any uh, TXT that works. So I added some documentation. So I put the link here and then upload worksheet and we have the same same thing uh, now in the notebook we can uh, so what's it using the key the sage colon it looks for code blocks and then the sage colon part is what it uses as the cell for what gets with where the expression is yeah, yeah exactly the this code was already existing because it was already possible to take a HTML uh, documentation page and import it in the notebook I, as I, I just did uh, for the my demo. So this code uh, transferring the, the Sage block into cells was existing. So I just took it to make it work on not on the output by Sphinx, but on the output by Docuseries, which is uh, quite different. It's more simple the the, the output of Docuseries. <coughs> yeah, so it does this. It looks for the prefixive sage dot 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 is the, the prefix and it, it, it does the it creates a cell. Are you tied into the existing RST processor to get that? Yeah, I'm using just first the uh, RST to HTML. Right. Then the thing I just uh, told and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Were your outputs there just computed on the load or were your outputs somewhere earlier on in the process? 
They're in the rest uh, file. They're in the rest file. Yeah, they are. They were in the rest file. So you could doc test that rest file. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I can. Uh, yeah. Sage dash t on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. I I can have a wrong wrong answer. I think it will upload a wrong answer first. But if I load, if I evaluate the cell, it will yeah, correct it. I guess. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Great. Yeah, so I'm sorry for the this thing. Maybe.